So I know the whole Barbenheimer craze was pretty insane, but I swear to you guys, there was a lady wearing a pink ball gown in the theater lobby while I was waiting for Oppenheimer to start. You can't make stuff like this up. And when I saw Barbie, over half the theater was wearing pink clothes, myself included. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your BFF Snowy Oreo 663 here, right here, right now. And I just finished seeing Oppenheimer and Barbie, some of the most anticipated films of this year. Since pretty much everyone is planning on seeing these movies back to back, I figured I would make a super cool double review about the two of them. But don't worry, I'll include timestamps so you can skip to whichever review you want to hear. Or both. Please both, I need the views. First up, Oppenheimer, since I saw that one first. I'm not usually a fan of long, drawn out non-fiction films, so how did I feel about this one? Well, I really liked it. It definitely has a very artsy and oh look at my cinematography feel to it, but in all honesty, I'd say the first two thirds of the film feels like one giant long montage. The music is sometimes overpowering the dialogue, but I think it works for many of the scenes it's presented in. While each scene on paper would feel like it's too long or too convoluted, I never found myself being bored throughout the entire film. The pacing was expertly handled, making every scene feel purposeful and important. I do have to go on a small little side tangent about this movie's concept for just a moment. I grew up in Florida. And can I just say how awful the education system was? Like, just as an example, before people were hyping up this movie, I had literally no idea who Oppenheimer was. I never even heard of the name. I knew the name of Heisenberg, but I had no idea what he had done. My only knowledge of the Manhattan Project had to do with some of the behind the scenes discussions about the film Cabin in the Woods of all places, where the staff there was said to be compared to the people working on the Manhattan Project. I did know about the US attacking Japan, but literally that's the full extent of the knowledge. The US dropped two nukes on Japan. That's it. That's all I learned. About the nuclear tests the people did in the middle of nowhere in the US, I learned about that from a one-page essay I wrote in college less than a year ago about the subject. My lack of understanding of much of the historical events in this movie didn't hinder my experience though. I had zero idea about the film who Robert Downey Jr's character was supposed to be, nor do I have the slightest grasp on communism or why everyone is so angry and afraid of it. I honestly am going to end up doing hours upon hours of research about these topics instead of having done them back in school like so many others had the privilege of doing. Seriously? screw the Florida school system. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the movie. I found that Oppenheimer's character was done extremely well. He sort of flip-flopped around from appearing as apathetic towards the destruction of the bomb to genuinely concerned, but still having many character flaws that made sure the audience knew he wasn't perfect. As someone who knew nothing about his real-life counterpart, I was thoroughly engrossed in the story and extremely interested in what would happen to him. One minor gripe I have with this film is the large number of side characters that play very small roles, but are referenced so many times that I had trouble keeping track of who was who. Maybe if I knew more about some of these characters in real life, their names would have stuck out to me more. But instead, Oppenheimer would be talking about someone that I could have sworn I never heard of before. But then the movie would implement a one second shot featuring a background character who had a total of like one line of dialogue, just so we knew who he was referencing. This happened several times throughout the movie and it made it difficult to try to remember all the people. Despite that, there were some unbelievably powerful scenes in this movie. I'll put a minor spoiler warning here, since all this stuff is just historical events, so it's not technically spoilers. But anyways, Oppenheimer giving his speech after the bombs had been dropped on Japan the whole scene of them testing the first bomb in the desert, and especially his final conversation with Einstein about what he had done made for some truly powerful filmmaking. Those are all some of my favorite scenes in cinema this year. The soundtrack for this film was outstanding. I also really enjoyed the quick second long cuts to showcase some of the sciencey things that Oppenheimer was talking about. Those quick shots gave a visual aid that imprinted on the audience, allowing them to somewhat grasp the difficult to understand scientific concepts. Each time they were accompanied by a loud sound that just seemed to fit into the music so well. I didn't expect to like this movie as much as I did. I assumed I'd come away with a, it was good, but it's not for me sort of mindset. Instead, I found that it was a genuine masterpiece of cinema that I would highly recommend. At least have a slight grasp on some history before you do. Lord knows it would have helped me out. I'm giving this one 9.5 Funtime Box Beats out of 10. Now let us move on to Barbie, the other film that I saw. I never really grew up playing with these. I was more of a Monster High girl myself. Despite my lack of nostalgia, how did I feel about it? Well, again, I really liked it. It's obviously not as good as Oppenheimer, but I found Barbie to be extremely funny and even quite emotional at times. Yes, the funny haha -ha Barbie movie almost made me cry, go figure. The film is clearly meant to be a satire or parody of the Barbie brand, despite directly involving Mattel in the production and in the movie's story. I think that this parody angle actually worked great in the film, despite it taking slightly more of a serious tone in the climax. 
Max, as serious as a Barbie movie could get, of course. The set design was honestly outstanding. Each prop was carefully made to look like it was a toy that could be purchased. Even the water was straight up painted on the ground since Barbies never were supposed to be used in actual water. Each little detail shows how much care and thought was put into the film to respect the brand. The comedy had me laughing out loud multiple times in the theater. I love how much it pushed the PG-13 rating, with hidden sex jokes or censored cursing. Even acknowledging inappropriate Barbie dolls that Mattel had released in the past was downright hilarious. A lot of that humor comes down to the performances as well. Margot Robbie did a fantastic job portraying Barbie, and her charisma and struggles were extremely believable. But do I really need to talk about Ryan Gosling as Ken? Man slayed that role, he was born to play him. Ken fits the himbo mold that is desperately needed in Hollywood. And of course, the himbo mold is pure of heart, broad of shoulders, dumb of ass. Perfect, that is exactly what Ken is. And while I won't reveal any spoilers, I will say that I really didn't like the way his character was heading through the middle of the film. It just felt too off and not in a good way. However, the ending that Ken gets is probably the best way it could have gone. I'm so glad that his ending wasn't the most predictable thing on the planet. Now, my main issue with the film. No, it's not the feminist message. Shut up, Ben Shapiro. The feminist messages this movie put forward, even touching on toxic masculinity, were really well done and a big highlight of the movie. If you have a problem with feminist talks like that, why were you going to see the Barbie movie? That's about the most feminist thing you could watch. No, those aren't my issues. My biggest problem comes down to the three plots sort of fighting for screen time and some not being developed enough. There's Barbie trying to connect with the human who is playing with her so she can fix herself. There's Ken becoming a manly man and taking over Barbie land. And then there's the corporate people trying to recapture Barbie to put her back home. On top of that, there's Barbie's journey of self-discovery. I think that especially the human mother and daughter plotline had been severely dropped in the second half. It was being set up as the main focus of the story, while the other two plotlines would be side things for comedy's sake. Instead, it was mostly forgotten about. The connection between the mother and daughter was initially set up to be damaged and needing repair, but then the movie focused too much time on the Ken storyline and pushed the others to the side. It almost felt like Sasha, the daughter, was no longer a character. She just sort of fell into the background, and the corporate bad guy story just came to an end quickly with no real impact. The Ken storyline was easily the least interesting part of the movie, despite it taking up most of the second half. Overall, this movie was extremely enjoyable. A great message for young women out there thrown in, an important statement on toxic masculinity and finding yourself, coupled with great comedy and amazing performances. Give it a watch if you aren't an asshole who thinks everything involving something other than a straight white Christian man is woke. I'm giving Barbie 8 Funtime Fox Feeds out of 10. Thanks so much for watching my video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a fun comment. I try to respond to as many as I can. With all that said and done, I'll see you in the next one. And remember, read up on some history outside of school if you feel as though you don't fully grasp everything you want to know. I guess that goes for all subjects too. And remember to be unapologetically you. You are capable of doing anything you want. Bye.